Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the US dollar ruble weekly chart crossed over the US dollar Chinese yuan. Now, we've talked about some strange stuff recently. We've talked about various conspiracies, things with NASA, crazy flat earth stuff. And I think one of the commenters said, I can't imagine that we could go further down the rabbit hole than this. Well, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we're actually going to go further down the rabbit hole on this one. So I'm going to start out with a video. It's not going to make sense at first, but I'm going to go ahead and play that. Uh, let me introduce it by telling you that the Wizard of Oz, I think most of you know that the Wizard of Oz was actually a novel written by L. Frank Baum and it had really nothing to do with what Hollywood turned it into. It was a allegory or a um, story trying to give symbolism about the battle over gold and silver being real money. Now, if you've followed some of the articles I've written before about the silver slippers, if you remember, Dorothy didn't have ruby slippers in the book. That's in, in the movie she had ruby slippers, but in the book she had silver slippers. And the silver slippers were her ability to bring her back to Kansas. And she was told that she had that power the entire time. Now, we know that physical silver is something that really can break the banksters. We know this. And so silver is the silver slippers. So I wanted to show you something else that's in this movie. We'll just go ahead and play this. This forest. It's it's dark and creepy. Of course I don't know, but I think it'll get darker before it gets lighter. Do do you suppose we'll meet any wild animals? Mm, we might. Animals that that eat straw? Uh, some, but mostly lions and tigers and bears. Lions? And tigers? And bears. <laughs> Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. 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 Lions and tigers and bears. Now, if you remember the rest of that scene, the, it was actually the cowardly lion, and the lion was somebody who, the lion is somebody who scares people with his roar. The roar of a lion is something that is tremendously powerful sound. Nevertheless, the lion actually doesn't do the hunting. It's the female lion. It's the male lion who's distinguished by his voice. Now, I wanted you to listen to this interview with Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. Trust me, I'm, I'm going to put this all together. But let's listen to this latest interview with Eric King. Because you were there when the country was in so much trouble, Dr. Roberts, and you were called in with others to save the United States from collapse when Reagan came into office, as you watch us push closer and closer to that wall that the Austrian economics warns us not to approach, if you had to speculate, what is going to begin to cause this whole thing to collapse? Well, actually, we've climbed over the wall that the Austrians warned us again. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We're not just getting close to it. We've already climbed over it. And I think, Eric, that um, we've miscalculated in thinking we could uh, have Russia and China as vassal states. They're not going to be vassal states. 
therefore, this realization on the part of Europe could affect Europe's toleration of their own vassalage to the United States. Uh, they could decide that, hey, you know, look at all the risk that we've been pushed into by Washington. Uh, risk of conflict with Russia, the breakup of our very profitable economic relationships with Russia, the renewal of the Cold War with Russia, which we suffered under the entire 20th century till Reagan ended it. Now, look, the bastards have brought it back. Why did Washington do this? You could see the empire disintegrate. I mean, all it takes is one European country to leave the EU and NATO, and the American empire ends. That's all it takes. And now... Now let me try to put this together for you. So we're going to have to go to the Bible now and look at Bible prophecy. I'm going to take you to Daniel 7, but before I take you to Daniel 7, I want to take you to Daniel 2. Now for those of you who are familiar with Bible prophecy, you know that Daniel 2 is about when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he called all the sorcerers, astrologers, and magicians to him to have them interpret the dream, but he didn't trust them to give a true interpretation of the dream. Therefore, he required them to tell him what the dream was before they gave the interpretation. And they said to him, O king, live forever, tell thy servants the dream, and we will shew the interpretation. The king answered and said, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. Now, it turns out that an order was given by the king that all of the magicians, astrologers, and wise men of Babylon should be destroyed. That included Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the four Hebrew eunuchs that were in the court of Babylon. Now, Daniel was actually given by God the answer. He not only was given the answer to the interpretation of the dream, but he was actually given the dream. And he came before Nebuchadnezzar, and he revealed the dream, and he revealed the interpretation of the dream. Now, this is the interpretation. Verse 31, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. Now remember, this is Nebuchadnezzar. This is a Gentile king. If you look at Jan Daniel 4, that is actually the testimony of a Gentile king. That's actually the only chapter in the Bible written by a Gentile. The rest of the Bible is written by Jews. But uh, again, this is what Daniel interpreted. Thou, O king, sawest and beheld a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold. His breast and his arms were of silver. His belly and his thighs of brass. His legs of iron. His feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of, hev of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So Babylon is the head of gold. After thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. Now we know from history what these kingdoms were. These were the kingdoms up to the advent of Christ. So the Jews were in captivity under Babylon. The next kingdom was Medo-Persia. And then after that came the kingdom of Greece. And then came the Roman Empire. 
and that's under the Roman Empire, that's when we had the first advent of Christ. So these are the kingdoms that ruled the earth. Now we have another, we'll call it dispensation, that we're in right now. And that is after the advent of Christ. And this is what Daniel 7 is about. Now, Daniel 7 is about the kingdoms that will rule the earth before the second advent of Christ. And one of the kingdoms is the same. It's the Roman or the revived Roman Empire. But let's look and see what these kingdoms are, which are going to be in power when Christ returns up until his return. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and had eagles' wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And I behold another beast, like to a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it, and they said unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. And after this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. So this fourth kingdom is the same kingdom in both Daniel 2 and Daniel 7. It's Rome. Now, is Rome the... European EU, the EU Empire, is that the revived Roman Empire? If you're a follower of Hal Lindsey's Great Late Planet Earth, I'm sorry, Late Great Planet Earth, then you'd say, yes, it is. I'm not sure if it is. But what I'm interested in anyway are these other three. Notice that we have a lion, a tiger, and a bear. Now, I'm going to propose, and this is something that I learned from Noah Hutchings, uh, that these are the three kingdoms that actually hold sway in the end time up and in, up into the period of the second Roman Empire, the revival of the Roman Empire. So the big question is, who is the lion with eagle's wings? Who is the bear? And who is the tiger or the leopard? Now, this is actually interpreted by the angel. And most of this that's given is about the fourth kingdom. But if you look into Revelation, I don't have the verse in front of me. It's the, the verse where the beast rises up out of the sea. The beast is like a lion and he's like a tiger and he's like a bear. So these three are also contained in that. So it seems pretty clear that these are going to be kingdoms that are in existence at the time when the Antichrist arises. Now the last verse I want to show you here is Isaiah 18. This is what many have contended and I happen to believe, is a prophecy about the United States. A lot of people have said, I don't believe the United States is in Bible prophecy. Well, I not only believe that it's in Bible prophecy, I believe that it's actually there multiple times. It seems very clear to me that a lion with eagle's wings is the Anglo-American empire. We know that the lion, the one that speaks with his voice, we know that England is the land of the king. It's the land of the King James Bible. It's the land of the voice of truth that has come out. And 
been spread all over the world in the English language. But the eagle's wings, we know that the, the flying machine, the airplane, was invented in the United States. And the United States is literally a land shadowing with wings. It is literally a land where the shadows of the jets continuously pass over that land. Quite interesting with our recent foray into the flat earth and the tracking of the airplanes, we don't get to see the shadows of the wings over the oceans. But we do see a very large amount of shadowing from wings in the United States. It's also a nation that is meted out and trodden down. That means that that nation is measured. Every bit of land in it is measured and has been plotted out. How many nations do you know of? Think of Russia and Siberia, where no one even knows what's there. And it's also a land whose land the rivers have spoiled. It's a land that's divided by rivers and the borders of the majority of states in the United States are actually a river. Uh, you can see states like Missouri or Ohio or many states that have, we'll call them squiggly borders. Those borders are rivers. So it is literally a land who the rivers have spoiled. Now this land is judged before the harvest and when the bud is perfect, but it's a sour grape. And he shall cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and take down the branches. And this is what's a little bit disturbing. The fowls shall summer upon them and the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. So there's going to be some pretty serious judgment against this land. Now, I personally believe that's actually going to happen in the tribulation period. That's a period of time, the uh, 70th year of Daniel. That's going to be, I'm sorry, the 70th week of Daniel. That's going to be a seven-year period, a period where uh, Gentile believers, believers in Christ who are in the members of the church, the body of Christ, they won't be on the earth at that time because the rapture will have occurred. But nevertheless, we're talking about three major powers contending for power here on the earth. And it does appear when we look at what's happening right now, that this is a battle between the United States, Russia, China, and then you could say the EU, although we may be looking at a larger revived empire. So, now, again, I said the United States, but you have to remember that it is the lion with eagle's wings. It is an Anglo-American empire. So what does this all mean? Well, I can't tell you for certain. All I can tell you is that the Wizard of Oz has both the lions, tigers, and bears, and it also has the silver slippers. Now, which one is going to come true? Will the lions, tigers, and bears stop us from getting to the Emerald City, where we're going to find out that our silver slippers can take us back to Kansas? Or will we get there and they will be defeated? I can't answer that question. That question is whether or not, something we talked about before, whether or not these powers are actually cooperating with each other or are these powers enemies. I would say from my observations, from the conspiracies and from what I've seen in markets and from, from what I've seen in the news and from what I've seen in the controlled media, I would have to say that these powers are all allied with each other in one way or another. But if I look strictly to Bible prophecy, I would have to say that these are separate powers 
that these powers have their own interest. And if that's the case, and we know from the Tower of Babel that God intentionally separated the nations so that they could not unite together because inevitably when all men unite together, they unite against God. I'd have to say, based on the Bible, that these nations are actually rivals. And if that's the case, then the one weapon that none of them have really decided to use to bring the current system down is silver. And will that weapon be used? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And we'll talk to you next time.